Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. The question is, should you master your own mixes? Now, before we dive into that, real quickly, what is mastering? Mastering is the third step of a three-step music production process. Recording, mixing, mastering. When your mix is finished, then it moves on to the final stage of preparing it for release. That typically involves using tools like a limiter, EQ, dynamic EQ, multiband compression, compression, uh, and uh, any host of processing to get it ready for the final release. Here's what a mastering session looks like. This is one of my recent mastering sessions. If you want me to teach you my process for mastering, uh, I have a mastering course that you might want to check out. Go to homestudiocorner.com slash master to check that out. Okay, let's dive in. So the question is, should you master your own mixes? Meaning, once you've mixed the song, are you disqualified from mastering it? So should you master it or should you have someone else do it? And the answer to that question for me is no, no, yes, yes, yes. So I've got two no's and three yeses to answer that question. So let's talk through it and help you decide what you want to do when it comes to mastering your music. The first no, another set of ears. You're just too close to the music. Once you finish the mixing process, which might take a really long time, you have heard this song so many times that you really can't hear the problems in the mix. Having someone else do the mastering means you get a fresh set of ears listening to it for maybe the first time, and they can quickly find those last few problems and fix them, whereas you might not be able to hear them at all. Plus, having somebody else master your music means as they're listening, as they're doing the mastering process, they can also provide valuable feedback. And I'd encourage you, if you do have someone else master your music, ask them, hey, what advice would you give me for the next project? And they'll give you like gold mine of information on how to improve your mixes so that you make the mastering process easier. The second no, at least one touch by a professional. If you're a hobbyist, and you've done everything yourself, mastering is a great opportunity to have someone with better ears and better gear, a true professional, work on your music. And they can have a really big impact without a huge impact on your wallet. Mastering is typically the least expensive service to hire out versus a bunch of musicians and a recording engineer in a studio, a mixing engineer. Mastering typically takes the least amount of time and can be the least expensive option to have a professional work on your music. Plus, you get peace of mind with somebody else making the final decisions about your music. So the first yes to the question, should you master your own mixes, is it's surprisingly fun. When I used to think about mastering early on, I thought of recording was all the fun, mixing was pretty cool, but the mastering engineer was some nerd just doing things scientifically. And that's not the case at all. When I started mastering for myself and others, I realized it's a completely different creative process from recording and even mixing. Even though you use a lot of the same tools that you use in mixing, it's completely different. Working with a stereo mix versus working with 30 individual tracks, it's a whole different ball game. It's a creative puzzle to solve and it forces you to think differently. A technique that I might use in a mix session won't have the same results in a mastering session because, for example, that compressor is hearing everything in the mix versus just the kick drum. The second, yes, it'll improve your mixes. As you work through the mastering process on something you've mixed, you'll start to notice trends and themes in your mixes that you can start to fix the next time you mix a song. Meaning, you may not be able to notice the problems during the mixing session, but as you're mastering and listening to all the mixes together and doing all the things you need to do, pushing it into a limiter to get it nice and loud, then you notice all these problems pop up when you get to that volume, as you start to fix those problems in mastering, it helps you understand that it would actually be better to fix these in mixing for the next project. So if you think about the get it right at the source philosophy, it doesn't just mean get the recordings right so that the mix sounds good. It also means get the mix right so that the master sounds good. The better the mixing, the better the mastering is going to sound. So Part of that is just something you can't learn until you get in there and you work on a mastering session. The whole process of just pushing the volume up into a limiter causes things to happen that you just can't know unless you've done it a few times. And as you see that, you realize, hmm, my snare drum keeps getting lost after the mastering process. 
I'm going to push my snare a little louder in my mix than I normally would so that when the mastering compressor or the mastering limiter hits that, it actually brings it into the perfect place where it needs to be. That's a very specific example of a lesson that I've learned from mastering my own stuff over the years. And the final yes, this could develop into a business. Mastering is a mystery to a lot of people. They would almost rather have a wizard out there who does their mastering then figure out the mastering process. Recording process, that's easy for people to understand conceptually. Even mixing, people get, okay, you're moving faders and changing the sounds. But mastering to the average person, it doesn't make, it's hard to explain to someone who doesn't already know what it is. You can use that to your advantage. If you've always thought about finding a way to generate income from your studio, mastering would be a great place to start. A couple of reasons. First of all, it's mysterious, so people are already a little more accustomed to having someone, hiring someone to master their stuff. It might as well be you. Secondly, it's not super complicated. It's not nearly as involved as recording for people or even mixing for people because you're just getting stereo files and you're sending stereo files back. So there's a simplicity there that makes it easier to step into. Uh, and finally, you can do it remotely from anywhere. So you not, you're not just limited to the people in your immediate physical area uh, to have as clients. You could be mastering a project for someone in Australia one day, someone in Tanzania the next day, and then someone down the street the next day. It can all be done through simple tools that you already probably use on the internet. So if you love the idea of getting better at mastering your own stuff, or perhaps you don't want to master your own stuff, but you would like to master other people's stuff, highly recommend checking out my mastering course. It will walk you through the process. There's a guarantee. You don't, I don't keep your money if you don't get great results with it, but you can check that out for yourself at homestudiocorner.com slash master, as in record, mix, master. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.